So this process of becoming a UU minister is intense, y'all. Um, I have a game that we're gonna play here in just a minute, but to set the stage, I'm gonna, um, gonna explain a little bit of what goes into it. So the process is overseen by the Ministerial Fellowship Committee of the UUA, um, and the UUA is like the central organization of Unitarian Universalism. Um, I, when I tried to explain it to my Catholic grandma, I said it's kind of like the Vatican, but not remotely as intense, just like that central organization. Um, and there's three phases of the initial process. There is aspirant status, candidate status, and then preliminary fellowship. Um, I'm currently in aspirant status. I hope to be moving into um, candidate status by the end of the year. And if everything goes according to plan, about this time next year, we're gonna be starting to talk about planning my ordination. <laughs> yes, we're, we're getting there. Um, okay, so we have a huge list of requirements to get to preliminary fellowship, and then that's the stage when you're considered an official UU minister. Now, this is a very condensed version of the process, um, so don't come at me. It's not super detailed, um, but we're going to focus on what it takes to be considered an official UU minister in preliminary fellowship today. Um, so we're going to play a game. You should, or around you, there are some green cards. Each one of those green cards has something written on it. It is either a requirement, if it's a requirement, it says requirement in bold, or it's a potential barrier or a requirement to meet a requirement. So what we have here, and it's okay if you don't have one, there's, there, I think there's 26 total, not everybody was gonna get one. What we have here is a game board of the process. So you'll see these bolded ones, these are the big requirements. We have, you know, th we have uh, three to six years in seminary, 400 hours of CPE, a one to two year internship. But then there's some other stuff on here that might make that process harder. So I'm gonna get us started. I'm gonna go ahead and um, give us discernment. Let's go ahead and pretend we're already on the, on the path. So what we're gonna do is go one at a time to uh, through here. And I'm gonna call out whoever has that card. You can bring it up or hold it up and I will come get it if you don't wanna come up here. And you're gonna trade it for a little check mark. Now, a couple of these check marks have glitter on them. If you draw a glitter check mark, that's privilege and you get to skip some barriers. You get to skip barriers to the next um, thing. So we're gonna see how this goes. We are in discernment, we've done that. Who has a letter of recommendation from a UU minister in full fellowship? All right, do you wanna bring it up or I can come get it? Oh no. <laughs> oh my God, I got it. All right, thank you. I'm gonna trade it for a check mark. All right, and if you wanna put the check mark right here, sorry, on the requirement. Fantastic, thank you. Who has 100 to $200 for a background check? All right. So that, thank you so much. You wanna grab a, grab a thing and pop it up here. Got a regular one right here, thank you. All right, who's got a background check? All right. Thank you. This is just like, this is before you're even in anywhere. Another regular check mark. Who has access to a home congregation? Thank you. All right, who has a relationship with a home congregation? It's Ellen. I'm gonna pop that one right here and draw your check mark. It's the next one, thank you. All right, who has formal sponsorship by a home congregation? Jerry, thank you. Westside became my official sponsor in the MFC process in 2020, I believe. Thank you. Draw your check mark and you're gonna pop it right here. MFC is the Ministerial Fellowship Committee. This is the, the big thing that oversees it. Fantastic, who has undergraduate education? Thank you, Morgan. 
It is like bingo. Oh, it's glittery. Oh, you got a glitter one. Yay, you get to skip a barrier. So we're going to go next to who has $50,000 for seminary tuition. All right, come on up. Yeah, basically. All right. $50,000 in student loans for seminary tuition right here. Thank you so much. Right here, yeah, because we got to skip that last one because Morgan got a sparkly one. Thank you. All right, next, who has accepting that the colleagues deciding your career future get total access to a report of your health, trauma, and mental ill health histories? Thank you. Yes, yeah, so as part of this process, we undergo a complete psychological evaluation called a career assessment. Thank you, right here. And the report of that gets sent to the entire MFC. Um, and they review it in depth and in detail and ask you questions about it. <laughs> Who has $1,500 for that psychological evaluation? Hi, Mary. Thank you. You can grab a check mark, whichever one you want, and you're going to go right here. Thank you. Who has a comprehensive psychological evaluation? Anybody? Here we go. Thank you. Yes. Oh, yes, yeah, uh, career assessment. You're right. Thank you. Right here. Thank you so much. Oh, you're, oh, you're perfect. You're perfect. Um, who has three to six years of seminary? Or an MDiv degree, sorry, Master of Divinity degree. Hmm, what does this one say? Oh, yep. Sorry, 90 hours of graduate school to complete seminary in three to six years, yes. Sorry, I changed it up a little bit. All right, who has $8,000 to $12,000 to replace 400 hours of income? That's to complete clinical pastoral education. No, not yet, not yet, I'll get that one next, all right. All right, $8,000 to $12,000 to supplement income during CPE, perfect, thank you. All right, another regular one. Not too many glitter ones happening today. Thank you. Who has $700 to $2,000 for clinical pastoral education tuition? Thanks, Morgan. If it seems like it's taking a long time, that's kind of the point. Oh, Morgan is all about it. Okay, so Morgan got another glitter check mark, so we get to skip. $6,000 plus for 400 hours of childcare to complete CPE. And we're gonna skip straight to 400 hours of CPE, which I think Nathan said he had. You want me to get it for you? Thank you. And remind us what CPE Sorry, CPE is clinical pastoral education. So um, that is where uh, you go for about 12 weeks full time and serve as a hospital chaplain and complete an education course while you're doing that. So it is 100 hours of supervision in a classroom and 300 hours of clinicals one on one with people providing pastoral care. All right, who has um, 50, 50 plus required books? Thank you. I got right here. All right. Who has one to three part time jobs to supplement the internship stipend? Thank you, Jonas. You want to grab your check mark and you're going to put that one right here. Thank you, sir. All right, who has access to an internship site? Thank you. All right, who has a one to two year internship? Thank you. I think that's this one. It says one year full time, two years part 
yes, that's it. So um, there are a couple ways we can do it. We can do one year full time, two years or two years part time. Most people like to just get it done if we can. Thank you. I'm tired already. Uh, me too. <laughs> yeah. Good. I'm glad it's. I'm glad it's making sense. All right. So who has the MFC paperwork packet and two hundred and fifty dollars for an appointment fee? Thanks, Yetta. All right, who has a six month wait for an MFC appointment? Judy. <laughs> it takes a while, right? Look, I'm only on phase one and I've been in it for six years. You're gonna go right down here. Thank you, ma'am. Who has the MFC interview? All right. Thank you, Lynn. Let me put that right there, thank you. And who has ordination? Yes. All right, grab that last check mark. Thank you so much. So there's a lot there, huh? <laughs> the last word is stole. So this is making a minister start to stole, but it got a little messy. That's why I added the glitter so the L was a little more legible. And show us where you so where I am. Yeah, so I'm... So each one of these barriers, that's some, somewhere that someone like me has dropped out of the process. There are more UU ministers who have dropped out of the process than there are UU ministers who have completed it. And each one of these barriers are a reason that someone doesn't get to follow their call. Right now, I completed seminary last year. I've done my psych evaluation in my undergrad. And right now, I'm str <laughs> what I'm struggling with is how to replace eight to twelve thousand dollars in income so I can take CPE, um, CPE tuition. I can probably handle, but I'm gonna need help with six thousand plus uh, dollars for four hundred hours of childcare, and so on and so forth. I'm lucky that there are some internship site options in Knoxville, but um, I'm glad that this kind of demonstrated that it's kind of a big deal. It's a lot, and a lot goes into it, and. Actually, even with all of this, there's still something missing. Um, and that's actually what the sermon is about, is this thing that's missing that's absolutely critical for success. So if anybody needs a wiggle break, do that real quick, and I'm going to get up here.